The following program is sponsored in part by the Hockey Chamber of Commerce. Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is a special edition of Business Matters. It's special for a couple of reasons. First of all, tonight is the night of the Hopkins and Chamber of Commerce annual holiday party, an opportunity for people in the business community and people interested in Hopkins' economic well-being to get together. And secondly, the Chamber tonight is honoring and recognizing the distinguished service of two outstanding Hopkinsonians, Police Chief Tom Irvin and the president of the Hopkinton Basketball Association, Ken Driscoll. What you're about to see is a program which recognizes both of these fine individuals. Why does the chamber take this time to acknowledge uh, distinguished service, people who have served the community well? Why, what's the theory behind that? Well, we choose to do it during the holiday season because it's festive. It's, it's, it's a good time of year to get people together and celebrate the year that's, that's just happened and to find two individuals that we found here that have given so much back to the community and Chief Irvin and Ken Driscoll, we're happy to be honoring them tonight here at the Hopkins Country Club. Why did you pick uh, Chief Irvin? Oh, because of the dignity in which he carries out his duties. He's an honorable person. He's, he's been with the town for many, many years and uh, we think it's appropriate that we pay him this tribute back tonight. We pick Ken Driscoll because he's been instrumental in uh, raising the Hopkins Youth Basketball Association to another level. Now, I never played basketball growing up, but from what I understand, uh, the youth activities in this town have been on the forefront of any of our communities in the Metro West area, and it's people like Ken who have helped get it there with the basketball, and there's other people you can name who have helped out with other sports as well. And uh, this town has a high percentage of kids uh, relative to the total population and uh, people want youth sports. They want to have a strong sports program as well as academics. And so people like Ken are, are really what this community seeks. What distinguishes Hopkinton for you from, the, for, from other communities in the area? Well, it's, uh, it's a community that is conveniently located and uh, you can commute into Boston fairly easily. It's known as a bedroom community. There's not a lot of commercial development in this town and I think the residents uh, have a lot to say and uh, they do want to see more commercial development but at the same time they like their rural characteristic of their community and they want to feel safe. Huge amount of children in this town. Um, the uh, police force has uh, always made people feel uh, very at ease in this town all growing up. There was always plenty of police force. I think that's a good thing the residents want to continue to see. What makes Tom a good chief is that he's willing to learn um, my heart's broken with him leaving. I go to meetings everywhere, you know, regional meetings. Whenever I bring back information to Tom, he acts on it. And Tom has always jumped on top of everything. And he's just been uh, a joy to work with. Um, you know, there's a quote that you can never fill, totally fill a receptive mind that wants to learn and you can't possibly do anything with a mind that doesn't want to, you know. And he has just been, uh, he's just been great. Your personal experience in working with uh, Tom Irvin? Oh, it goes back many, many years. I think him and I came on the job very close to each other in 1978. Yeah. I think he was a couple of months ahead of me. And we worked yeah. on the street together during some very turbulent times in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, the MBA rate was very high due to uh, uh, the drinking and driving. And uh, the police were instrumental in getting that stopped. But we did a lot of really serious accidents. And he was always the best person to have at your back when you did something out in the street. You know, your back was covered. Uh, he was always an asset, whatever we did together, the two departments working together. He was prime person moving forward with the, uh, which was very rare at the time, is Hopkinton had a, when I first came out with an ambulance in the early 70s, it was manned by both the police and the fire. The firefighter was the technician, the police officer was the driver. And uh, so we worked really close developed a, a closeness between the, the two agencies that is unmatched anywhere and still lingers on. Even before HBA, as Kenny Driscoll and I go back and played in some men's basketball teams for many, many years. We did, when Owen did some select teams that we, him and I, 
both happen to end up on it at, at, at uh, in some tournaments and things like that. Outstanding basketball player, and he brought all that uh, fatherhood, all that basketball experience to to basketball. You've had a, had a, a, an opportunity, in, or a unique opportunity, to work with with Irvin now over a number of years. What would you think? What do you think are his greatest qualities? He's the utmost professional. Plus, he's just. He really uh, he thinks about the big picture of situations, especially related to the marathon. And he doesn't prejudge. He just is uh, a really all-around great guy. Um, and I think very detail-oriented. I've known him since 1997, and he's just he's a man of you know great character too, and uh, really an outstanding person is you know he's the utmost professional but um, besides that I've got to know him as a very good friend and really respect him. I'd like to start by asking Dick Bliss to come up and uh, say a few words. Wow. Kenny there's some old pictures there buddy when it all started many moons ago and he came from Chicago to this wonderful little town of Hoppington. Thank God you did, I'll tell you. It made me look very good as a coach, I know that. But thanks, Bob, and on behalf of the Chamber, thanks for inviting me and my wife tonight. And uh, I feel like I'm a Hoptonian since I've spent 40 years of my life over in this wonderful town. And, and I see so many people here, whether I've had your sons and daughters as a coach or friends and fellow coaches too also. <laughs> coach O'Brien was with me for a few years. And, so many people that have made such an impact on this town and have watched this town grow. I can remember my first class and when I had at Hoppington High School and, and I started teaching the other classes with 70, 80 kids and now we graduate 250. We had two schools at that time and one of them didn't even have a gym, the center school, and I was teaching phys ed. And uh, now we have five schools with a bunch of gyms and facilities that are incredibly unbelievable. So. I've been blessed to have uh, spent a lot of time in this town. Even though I grew up in Westboro, and I see the hobbies here, of course, and they're legends over there. And uh, they help both the towns. And uh, it's been a pleasure not only working in this town, but coaching in this town. And I, I still coach right here. We had our golf banquet here a week ago. And uh, it's been very enjoyable to me. And uh, But we're here for uh, two people that have really serve the town above and beyond, as they say. I know Tim will be talking about the chief in a few minutes, but my job is to talk about Kenny, since Coach Joseph always talks at all these things, that you got to pinch hit for me to, tonight, and then you got to pinch hit for me tomorrow night, as we do the boys' game on cable TV with Mike Tarosian there. And uh, he says, I can't be there tomorrow night. I got my you know, Remax party, so you got to go find somebody. And who do you find? All you got to do is look, and you don't have to go too far. And Kenny and I will be up in the perch doing the boys' game tomorrow night at Hoppington High School. And if you can't make it down to the game, come listen to the two of us babble about, babble about the boys' basketball program. <laughs> so it should be a good night. And, uh, but Kenny, uh, I'm just going to talk about the HBA part and what he's done since he did come from Chicago. Number one, brought beautiful Laura with him and two lovely daughters. Laura, behind there's a good man, there's always a good woman, you know that. And we've had a great relationship with them for the years. And, uh, and uh, the two girls that I've had, both as players on my team, both captains, as the Driscolls will lead us, so, so, so was in their daughters. And uh, they've uh, helped to build a lot of things that happened in Hoppington. But it started with Kenny and the HBA, but it was really Alec Levine, and I'm sure many of you probably remember Alec in the 1970s and 80s, and we had one gym to work with down at Elmwood School, basically, and uh, he started what we called youth basketball, and uh, I got involved with him, and he got a lot of you might have been involved with him at that time, if you're that old and at that age, and uh, he got it going, and he did everything from refereeing to coaching to recruiting people because, you know what, there's no pay in these jobs, all right? This is a labor of love, and I think most of you have either touched 
some of the kids, not only your own kids in so many ways, but you've been a part of the program's coaching, doing things on the sideline, whatever. And Alex got it going, but then in about 1990s, uh, there was a special person that worked with, with Kenny, and she's here tonight, and I'd like to recognize her, Trish Jacobs. Trish, stand up, please. So with Kenny and Trish driving superintendents, principals crazy for gym time and finding coaches to coach and getting things set up, but we went from like four towns that were around us at one time. We had Westboro and Ashland and Southboro and Westboro. Now we started travel teams and they were instrumental in getting that going and getting people involved. And all, be, all before you knew it, we were very, very big into a lot of kids playing basketball, all right? That gave them an avenue to be in the gyms at nighttime and have a great time. And uh, that was huge, all right? So actually in 2000, they actually formed what we call the Hobbiton Basketball Association, 2000. Ten years ago, it all began, Kenny took and, and Trish took it under their wings and uh, created also a board of directors. And I'd like the board of directors that's here tonight uh, to stand up, so please stand up. Mary, Mrs. Sanborn, Mike Cree, right around the table, Chris Rudden, they're all here. And they, uh, they meet, and I became a part of that board this year since I had the time, since I wasn't coaching during the winter. And I've kind of kept the summer leagues going, I've kept the basketball camps going, and uh, they just do one heck of a job of getting this thing organized. They just celebrated their 10th year of the tap-off tournament. And I called Kenny up. I said, you got to give me some numbers and figures here to work with, what you've done and how many kids you've been involved in the programs. And uh, they just did their tournament. And they always do it a week before Thanksgiving because the basketball teams always get involved by helping keep the score. And it's all volunteers and so forth. But through this uh, program, from the tap off tournament, they have raised for the town, to, you know, over the years, $2,500. All right, and uh, they also have donated donated $150,000 to the schools. You can see scoreboards around. They fix gyms. They do everything. I know Dr. Phelan's here tonight, and he appreciates all they do and the help. And they have a nice partnership with him. And. Uh, they are just instrumental, and they've got over 500 coaches that have gone through their programs along with 5,000 different kids. So they've touched a lot of kids' lives, and uh, it's a real avenue during the winter for them to really meet the kids, get the kids to growing up. And as they go up through the high school, they make coaches like me look awfully good. All right? Because I get them at the final product, which is great. and. Uh, they have just, you know, get the kids prepared. And I, I, I'm just looking around how many people have coached. And I just see people and I go, wow, that was that year. That was that year. I'm trying to put years with kids and whatever. We'll have an alumni game with some of our girls in a couple of weeks. And Ella's daughter organized it, of course. And we bring back kids to play again. And then Ken had always had time to do other things. So he coached, you know, coached his daughters. And he coached with me three years on the freshman program. And, and then he coached with me when he had the time up at the varsity level, come any night. Chuck would drop in any night. Russ and Ophiel, come on in. I can always use an extra hand and knowledge, and, and the kids have all been a part of this, and those guys have helped me tremendously. But it was Kenny that got it going, and then he, then he got into these other projects. I was looking at the, the building across from the, the middle school now, which used to be our old high school, and there was, a, there was an old farm there. And, all of a sudden, I see this beautiful building now where the administration is and so forth, and I always called it the house that Ken built. And uh, it's, that's quite a project he put in there. So he's touched everything. Then he becomes involved in Parks and Rec. And Mike Preet, I know, could talk forever on what Kenny's done there and what he's doing now. He just, he's a giver. And you've never heard anybody say a bad word about Ken Driscoll. When they mention Ken Driscoll, they just smile and go, wow, what a guy, what he's done for this town. And he is so deserving of this award tonight. And 
I was just happy that I had a chance to come up here. And uh, his saying is, I say a lot of times, it's all about the kids. It is all about the kids with Kenny. All right, he'd do anything for any kid in time, town to do anything to help that kid along. Not only the talented kids, but the untalented, not so you know, fortunate. He was always there for everybody. And uh, I really appreciate all he's done for the town. Happy I got a chance to say a few words. And then tomorrow night, we'll babble up there above, high above courtside up on our perch. <laughs> and hopefully the boys' hillers will get a first win in the first game. But thank you for giving me the opportunity just to talk a little bit about Ken. And uh, I'm sure, Mr. Irvin, you know, good luck in your retirement. I see some of the many officers here that I hired as AD way back when. <laughs> were just patrolmen at that time, but have moved on in the force. So good luck to you also. So thanks for giving me the opportunity, and thank you, Ken Driscoll, for all you've done for our time. Dick, thank you very much. And, and Ken, if you would like, please come up for a moment. Well, I was doing okay until he did the it's all about the kids thing. So uh, I'll try to keep it together here. Um, Dick, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank everyone here. Uh, I'm honored. I'm humbled. Uh, when I, I got a call, and I'm like, why me? You know? and, then, and then I kind of figured out. I said, well, I really didn't know this guy. I said, oh, okay. Now it all came together. So, um, but uh, I, I, I thank everyone here. Um, and, you know, from the honored part, it's actually... I'm, I'm kind of, I led the team a little bit, but um, mostly it's all about the people. Dick talked about it, um, you know, Trish and, and all the hard work she put into it. We got a wonderful board. Um, there's 11 people on the board. Eight of them don't even have kids in the program. So they're just committed to doing the right thing for the kids. Um, you know, there, you talk about, it, you know, it is all about the kids, but it's also about the community. And for me, you know, people say, why are you still involved? I think they say, man, are you really still involved? But, you know, part two of that. But um, it's, for me, it's about community. And it's about everything, all the people here. I look around, and that's the part that makes me humble. Because to a person, you all do what I do. And, you know, for me to stand here, it just, you know, I thank you for that. But you all do what I do. You commit to this town. Um, it is a community. And... Uh, and I, I just, you know, feel that this is my way of helping this town be a better town. So, um, and I, I'm privileged to have the honor to do so, and I'm privileged to work with some great people. Um, I look forward to doing some more work with Parks and Rec. So, um, Mike, uh, you know, I'm going to be around a little bit. So, um, but um, I have to, uh, you know, recognize three ladies, and this is not a Tiger joke, Tiger Woods joke. But, uh, my. Uh, Two lovely daughters. Um, Nicole's not here tonight. She's doing her finals um, down at Lehigh. Um, my daughter Janelle here, and um, I want to thank them for allowing me to enjoy this space that they um, played basketball and, and and be a part of that. Um, and uh, and it's you know it's it's special when you can do that, and when you can coach your kids, it's just a, it's a blessing. Um, and also. Um, uh, my best friend, uh, the rock of my life, uh, the love of my life, uh, and Laura, for sharing me with all of you um, and allowing me to uh, do some of the things I get to do. So thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Dick, and, and thank you again, Ken. Be before we get to uh, Detective Brennan, I'm not sure how many of you are actually up here were looking at the photos. All of these, I, I can pick out Ken pretty easily, but I don't know if you saw Chief Irving. <laughs> Who remembers Starsky and Hutch? Does that look like one of those guys or what? Absolutely. I used to watch this show when I was a little kid. But moving on, uh, I'd love to invite uh, Chief Brent, uh, excuse me, Detective Brennan up here now. <laughs> yes, maybe someday, I don't know. But if... <laughs> go, 
Go easy on them, but tell us some good stories. Shall I get me fired? <laughs> I was thinking more uh, Don Johnson, <laughs> back in Miami Vice. Good evening. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Tim Brennan. I'm the day shift detective with the Hopkins Police. Um, first, I'd like to thank Patrick and Bob for inviting me in the Chamber of Commerce to come and speak here. Um, when they first invited me, I said, what am I going to say about the chief? Um, only good things. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Irvin is a quiet leader. He never, he never seeks the limelight. Um, he does his job without fanfare or accolades. Uh, never seeking to be the center of attention any time. I've had the distinct pri privilege of working for the chief for seven years, full-time and a few years part-time before that. Tom became patrolman for the Hopkins Police Department in 1978 after uh, earning his Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice from Westfield State College. In 1978, a college degree to a police officer was something new. There was no financial incentive then proving that he was already breaking new ground and, uh, in a town of barely 5,000 people here in Hopkinton. In 1986, uh, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. I never knew him as a sergeant. It was funny though, if you had something controversial to happen on your shift since I've been here, there was always a senior guy that would perk up and say, wouldn't happen if T.I. was in charge of the shift. <laughs> They would also always, always add, he was real tough, but he was always fair, always fair. In 1999, Tom became chief of police. As chief, he has hired 10 of our current officers, promoted four other officers to ranking positions, establishing a strong rank structure, including the creation of the lieutenant's position, and hired the entire dispatch corps of people that we have now. Because of these hirings and promotions, a part of Tom will continue to live on in the Hopkins Police Department long after his retirement. He proposed, fought for, and built our current police station five years ago while he was still running the day-to-day -day operations for the department, a feat in itself. He established a more professional police department with a wide range of capabilities to further meet the needs of the town of Hopkinton today and far into the future. The chief's poise and character is second to none, especially under stressful or adverse circumstances. I have never seen Tom Irvin yell or even get angry. Close, but never quite get there. After a series of <laughs> tomorrow, when I get back to work. <laughs> yeah. After a series of trying and tragic events, I watched them handle and deal with the media, other town administrators, state leaders, and residents without missing a beat, and never ever seeming to say the wrong word. I saw, I saw and heard his concern for his staff that was being stretched to limits. When I was a school resource officer, I would hear administrators district-wide tell me how special a leader he is and how confident they are in his abilities, regardless of the situation. I always felt like Tom Irvin was treating us first as people and fellow officers before he was treating us like subordinates, unless, of course, it was a discipline issue, and then you absolutely knew who was in charge. After working in higher education for 15 years for several chiefs, I found this treating us like people to be one of his strongest attributes. The town of Hopkins is losing an outstanding community leader to retirement. The police department is losing their chief. I, like many others, am losing a mentor. Even though I'm losing a boss, I hope that at some point I can earn and keep a friend. Judy, Judy and Tom, I wish you luck in Tom's retirement. After going at warp speed for the last 11 years, I hope you can just adjust to a slower paced life. Uh, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce you to one of the honorees for tonight, Hopkins and Chief Police, Tom Irvin. Please, I'm embarrassed enough. Uh, uh, first, Tim. Uh, 
thank you very much. That was very nice. I don't know where you're working next. <laughs> Your new boss will be blessed. <laughs> blessed. Um, thank you. And uh, let me just say, those of you who know me know that I'm not particularly comfortable with, in this kind of setting. <laughs> those of you who know me well know that that's an understatement. <laughs> Bob, thank you very much this, for this honor. Really, it, it is. We had and, to beg him. We had to put him in honor. Well, it, there was there was a, a long uh, amount of time where I just wanted to say thank you very much, but no thank you. And uh, there's a reason I didn't say that, and that is that um, if I've made contributions to this community, it's because of the support I've had. And uh, for that support and for those people, uh, I proudly and gratefully stand before you. Uh, this community has uh, been supportive of the police department and me from day one. Uh, the town's boards and committees and departments and employees have been supportive of the police department and me since that kid uh, graduated from the police academy. And uh, the m women and men of the Hopkins Police Department have, uh, in their distinguished service to this community, honored me and uh, uh, since day one. And uh, several of them are here tonight, and thank you for attending. And every one of them has been um, with me at my side every step of the way of this journey and I'm uh, very grateful for that. A um, couple of people might need special notice. Um, I mean, always, um, you know, I was a second in command for a while. Best job in the police department because you get to have some fun and when <laughs> stuff really goes bad you go like, hey boss. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey. But it also is a very tough job in that everything the boss doesn't want to do, it's like, hey, second in command. So, uh, Lieutenant Flannery, thank you very much. And, uh, and then there's Marilyn Palmer, who, um, when I took over, my predecessor, Bill McRobert, who I also have a debt of gratitude for his mentoring of me, um, gave Marilyn a badge that said Deputy, Deputy Chief. We all kind of laughed about that. You know, it seemed like a funny idea. Oh, Deputy Chief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Marilyn, you're the Deputy Chief. Um, truer words were never spoken. <laughs> um, I cannot imagine having uh, uh, worked this job for the last 11 years without Marilyn's help. So thank you very much. Um, and then there's Judy uh, and my wife. And um, since all those midnight shifts and holidays and weekends that we did not spend together. Never one word of complaint or any idea that this wasn't uh, how life was supposed to be. Always very, very, very supportive. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, I, uh, I, I, it's been a great ride. And I really appreciate this, this honor. And I'm not sure I deserve it, but for all the people that helped me do whatever I've done for this community, we thank you. Uh, a couple of our select, select people are here. Uh, Matt Zedek and Michelle Gates would like to present some citations. Thank you very much. A couple quick thank yous to the Chamber for organizing this event, for everybody for coming out tonight. This is a really good turnout. Uh, a couple years ago, my dad was one of the honorees, and it was, uh, so I mainly mention that because you still are picking some great folks, because you know how I feel about my dad. <laughs> but just two, two great recipients here tonight. Also, just wanted to thank some selectmen, the ones who had the wisdom to appoint Tom Urban as the chief here in town uh, a decade ago, and also um, my coll current colleagues, because uh, this is my third year in the Board of Selectmen, 
And it was just a few months ago where Chief Irvin came to one of our meetings, and it was the only time I even had an inkling of denying his request. <laughs> and that's because it was his letter of uh, requesting, you know, us accepting his re uh, retirement letter. And it was our colleagues in the board who, uh, we had to do it, it was the right thing, but uh, again, your service is going to be greatly missed. So, without any further ado, on behalf of the Hopkins and Board of Selectmen, we are very pleased to acknowledge and endorse the selection by the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce of Thomas Irvin for his distinguished service to the people of Hopkinton. Tom has contributed greatly to Hopkinton as an officer and chief of the Hopkinton Police Department and has served with dignity and always with a commitment to high ethical standards. Therefore, the town of Hopkinton has greatly benefited from his service. We, therefore, the Board of Selectmen, express our congratulations to Tom Irvin, and we are honored as, it, uh, as he is honored as an exceptional citizen for the town of Hopkinton. Signed under our hand and seal this 8th day of December 2009, Brian J. Herman, Chairman, Matthew Zedek, Vice Chairman, R.J. Durney, Todd Sesteri, and Michelle Gates. Again, one of the few folks you're never going to hear a bad word about. We heard Coach Bliss describe that about Ken earlier. And again, we're very, very thankful, and your service has been greatly appreciated. Thank you. Nice job. How do you follow that up? Um, well, you follow it up with some things about Ken that um, probably they are a little different from what he's being honored for, but I think it's important that folks know some of the other things that he has done um, and the tenacious way that he has uh, completed some of the projects that I had the fortune to um, work on beginning, um, working on the agreement with the Hopkinton um, soccer group um, to create some fields on Fruit Street was an outstanding achievement and his diplomacy and his never-ending desire to get those fields built um, are a true testament to, to what a great asset he is to our community. Um, I see him working on the common, getting that refurbished, downtown revitalization. Um, Ken, again, is a true asset to our community and we are very fortunate to have him here. I have a proclamation um, we, the Hopkins and Board of Selectmen, are pleased to endorse and acknowledge the, the selection of, uh, the, by the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce, Ken Driscoll, for his distinguished service to the youth of Hopkinton. Under Ken's leadership, the Hopkinton Basketball Association has grown in both numbers of participants and quality coaching, and the HBA has become a regional leader for youth basketball and a source of pride for Hopkinton. We therefore, the Board of Selectmen, express our congratulations to Ken, and we are honored as an, he is an exceptional citizen. Signed under our hand and sealed this eighth day of December 2009. Congratulations, Ken. Well, the awards keep coming. We're lucky enough to have our state repre representative, uh, Carolyn Dykema, here, hot, fresh off the hill. And she has a couple more awards for both Ken and Tom. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and as I was listening to the speakers earlier, I couldn't help but notice a common theme, which was community, community community. And what I hear, quite honestly, um, whenever I hear the word Hopkinton mentioned or whatever I'm talking about Hopkinton, it's invariably someone will say, I hear that's a really wonderful community. And it really is. And I think what we're recognizing here today, that community is, is made up of a whole lot of very special individual people who realize how important it is to give back and how important it is to pay it forward and to recognize that um, of, of all the things we've been able to have um, in our lives to be able to do that 
um, for the next generation mm -hmm. and for others. And I think tonight we're here celebrating two very special people for their contributions to the town and the community of Hawkington. Um, I have two citations from um, the Mass House of Representatives. I would like to say a couple words about Chief Irvin, who I've had the opportunity to get to know um, and get to appreciate his quiet, calm, and uh, significant presence when he walks into the room. You know he's there. Um, he has been uh, a, such a wonderful resource for me, has been so welcoming in my first year in the legislature. Uh, I guess, you know, I'm almost speechless. And uh, from the heart, Tom, you will be so missed. Um, your uh, presence, your dedication to this community, your connection to anyone that you meet and come across is instantaneous and long-lasting. So uh, I guess without, without uh, being able to, to come across with just the right words, I would like to officially recognize you and your tremendous service. Wish you well in your retirement. And uh, while you are retired, we certainly hope that that will not be the last we see of you. Uh, and we welcome you back at any time. So I will recognize from the Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all, that um, it offers its sincerest congratulations to Chief Tom Urban in recognition of earning the 2009 Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce Distinguished Service Award for your exceptional leadership and unwavering support of the town of Hopkinton as Chief of the Police Department. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 10th day of December 2009. <coughs> Signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo and Carolyn Dyke, a state representative. And for Ken, uh, as a parent who recognizes and sees how much impact um, those who mentor the kids in the community have on those kids' lives, truly, um, all through their lives, in setting an example for um, good sportsmanship and leadership and commitment and dedication and perseverance through some tough times, I think, th think those are really life lessons that carry through you know, all the way and, in fact, will be passed on then to the next generation. So, Ken, for all you've done for the children of Hopkinton, for basketball, um, and for this community in general, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Ken Driscoll in recognition of earning the 2009 Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce Distinguished Service Award for your exceptional leadership of the Hopkinton Basketball Association and commitment to the youth of Hopkinton. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope of future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 10th day of December 2009. Thank you, Ken. You know, there is, uh, this is not a retirement party. No, I this hope is not, not a, a, a party to uh, wish you uh, good luck because your service in particular is going to continue and so is yours. But there are, <laughs> you'll have to tell Tom in what capacity. <laughs> Maybe there's a state house job in your future. <laughs> or Tim's key. Yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, I don't know, so I hope you've had a chance to look at this board. There are a couple of quotes on here and I, I, I just ask you to pay attention to these because it, it absolutely catches the flavor of these two people. Uh, this Distinguished uh, Service Award was voted by the Hopkinton Chamber Board of Directors. It's a group of about 30 uh, rather independent and opinionated people. Um, and when they, uh, when they decided to uh, consider this award, uh, I don't think it lasted a minute. Somebody said Ken Driscoll, boom. Somebody said Chief Irvin, that was it. Uh, so that's sort of the feeling that exists out in the community about both of you. But this particular quote, I think, catches uh, Ken's work. I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. So on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Chamber, congratulations and good luck. Thank you, sir. Stay right here. This one's pretty good. 
That's impressed. Yeah, it is. It is, huh? <laughs> Can't make this up. Oh, no. <laughs> Aristotle. <laughs> Men acquire a particular quality by consistently acting a particular way. You become just by performing just actions, temperate by performing temperate actions, and brave by, be, be, by performing brave actions. That catches this, this guy, uh, Chief Irvin. So thanks for uh, what you've done, and thanks what you'll, for what you're going to continue to do. Yeah. <laughs>